I'm going to show you guys some performance modifications you guys can do to a manual tire changer. Why you want one, why you don't, and in the process, how to change a tire. Well, take a tire on and off. So here you see we've just got a basic manual tire changer you can buy from anywhere. I've had this one for 10 or 15 years, paid around 50 bucks for it. Um, but I've got some extra things. First thing, most importantly, these rubber pieces right here. These are actually the paddles off of worn out snowblower paddles of single stays, but you can use a sidewall out of a tire. Just cut it right out. And then I got some other rubber pieces right here. And what these do is you put the rim on first, you put these down, and these protect the rim from the clamp. You lock it down. The problem is, I mean, there's a lot of room for these rims to move around on some of them. Let me slide this down in there. Put that down in there, and this just protects the little feet. Just get in there. But all, not only that, it keeps it from shifting back and forth. Where with just your thing in there, when you're putting it in the tire, you can see I can put scratches clear out here, which is not what you want. And I knocked the little rubber piece out of the bottom. So slide that back in, slide that back on. I right, put these in there, and then you really can wrench this down and your rim, it's not even that tight right now, and that rim is solid. Now, before we do the tire, talk about one more thing, and that's bolting it down. It really does make the biggest difference. The very first thing I tried was a pallet. Horrible idea. Slats move around everywhere. The second idea I had was to strap it to a two x 12. So I bolted it down to a two x 12 and actually drove my truck on top of the two x 12 and had that sitting as close to the vehicle as possible and a board steel had too much flex in it. I bolted it down. These are just 5 16 to 8 millimeter bolts into the cement, just with cement anchors. Easy as pie. You don't need a hammer drill or anything else like that. Just go pick yourself up some anchors, pick yourself up a masonry bit for two bucks, and use a regular drill, drill a shallow hole, put them in, bam, you're done. So, on to changing the tire, and for another tip, and that is another piece of rubber. This is actually a sidewall of a tire. You have this piece right here. So I usually lay that right over because the first thing you want to do is do the front of the put the front of your rim down. You put it right over that piece of rubber and you're not going to scratch it up. So we'll get this in here. Most of these, this one also I had to weld a little metal plate on here to help make these more rigid because they did bend on me. I think I even welded up here a little bit better. But start on the inside first. Get it peeled away just a little bit. Let's rotate it just a little bit. And we're all the way off. Make sure it's all the way down. And flip the other side. And you can see this bar even bent. I actually flipped that. There are some tires you have to push so hard. This is the inside. This side always comes nice and easy. This tire was already flat. But I have the valve core removed. So I'll just use the tool to pop out my center, slide my rim on, move my center out of the way, grab my other components, put these on, put that on so I can wrench this down. That's snug. Now, taking it off. You want to use lubricant, you do. Soapy water or some other sort of thing. I have some actual tire stuff that I bought off eBay years ago. This makes it night and day easier. It really does and it helps the rim just slide right off. Less fatigue on you, less fatigue on the machine, everything. Whether it's that dish soap, whatever. We have a, uh, let me pop that off probably. Well. We'll bring it in here, we'll push the other side down so we can get it up. And off comes our weight. That side's done. Push it down over here so it's in the groove down the bottom. We're going to lean against it. We're going to take our tool, catch the other side of the tire. Goodbye. Now, when don't you want to use a manual tire changer? And that's when you're completely in love with your rim. Because 
a manual tire changer rides on the edge of the rim at least a third of the way around and scuffs up that entire bit. And it's a smooth scuff. It's not as bad as a curb bash, you know, where you run it into the curb. And if you do have curb bash, actually, this actually kind of smooths it out. But it'll, it'll scuff up just this outer ring that's put in. And so will a lot of the old, you know, automatic tire changers like the Coats machines and stuff like that. A lot of the older machines will scuff up the rim. You pretty much have to buy a brand new machine if you don't want that to happen. Time for the new tire. So, first thing you want to check is make sure it's not directional. Some tires are meant to drive in one direction, so put it on the way you want. Other than that, choose the way you want it on. I'm going to put the date sticker. You know, once I'll have a date sticker, once I won't, I'll put that out. Um, but first, again, I'm going to lube it up. So I'm going to take this stuff. You want to do this because it helps the beads seat. Without doing this, you're pushing dry, the dry tire rubber, trying to push itself down over, and it fights it. And you have to use excessive pressures to the point where it gets scary. You know, you're inflating a tire to 60, 70 psi's, and it's popping so loud because it's going to blow up in your face. But usually, if you do this, you can get away with. You know, generally it'll be seat under 10 psi. Okay. Got some in my hand. It's an easier way to apply. I don't have one of those brushes that the pros have. The first side, generally, you can get on almost most of the time just by body weight, just by hand. So I got the center of the tire in that deeper groove. And generally, you can just muscle this thing on. And you can't do this when it's on a pallet because it flexes too much. Okay, now we just have to get the top on. Lube up the last side again, make it easier to slide on. There's a couple different techniques you can do to this. With this bar, you can use the, des the end this design for it, which works eh, mediocre. Um, never had good luck with it. It's a little design, it's designed a little crappy. Get it started. You try to get it to ride and go down, but it never will get you all the way around. You know, you start fighting it too much. So, don't let it pop out and hit me in the face. I like to nibble it on. So, you insert it, bring it back a little bit. Try not to nibble off too much. Bring it over. Watch it. Watch it. You don't get in there. Push it back over more towards the edge. Make sure your sides all the way down, and we should be on. There we go. Now to inflate, they have these locking um, tire valves that lock onto the surface and stay on. That has been the lifesaver. Because what I do is I start inflating it and I get away. So it's completely seated all the way around. Don't stick your fingers in there, but it's completely seated under, you know. Virtually no PSI because I had it lubed up. Now I can come in here and actually pump it up to the reg recommended PSI. Whoa, whoa, somebody said, whoa, what about balancing? Somebody's right in the comment right now. Don't worry about it. Here we got a static balancer. And generally tires are pretty freaking close to begin with. Um, they, it's very rare to get a tire that's even out that much. And even tires you balance, generally they go out of balance. They seem to go out of balance after 10,000 miles or something, so they're completely out of balance. If you don't go to balancer, I'd say don't worry about it. It's not going to kill anything. You know, if you're driving down the road and you notice something, yeah, go down, have them balance. But this one's needs a little bit right here, so we can get the huge weight collection. We can throw, we can throw one on. You know, we can put one on. Right right there and we'll be good to go.
Well, there we go. Time to put the full size spare back in the trunk. That actually fits in the same spot as a little donut. Kind of cool trick. But if you want to know how to just replace the, uh, the valve stem, I have a video on that. Or if you have a big old hole, I have a video on that as well, how to use those tire plugs. Plug them up from the outside without even taking the tire off the vehicle if you don't want to. It gets you out of a lot of pinches, those do. But thanks for watching. Watch one of those other videos right after this. And like, comment, subscribe. Why not, right? See if I can get a job at NASCAR. No! They're winning! Crap! Turn it back on! No! Hurry! You throw it all the way! No! I think I just failed the job interview. Looking at me, it's very embarrassing now. Never gonna hire me. I lost the lug nut. I'll send the car out without it. Oh no, found it. We're saved. That was a, uh, a dismal failure.